Look at all my cookies. Where are my cookies? Those are my cookies. They, they were my cookies. These are my cookies. Where are the cookies? <laughs> Somebody stole my cookies. It looks like I'm going to have to do some forensic DNA analysis. Here's a picture of my family. On the left here is my girlfriend, Devin. My mom is in the green jacket in the middle and is standing beside my dad, who is in the white jacket. My sister is beside my dad and is standing beside her boyfriend, Cameron. These people are the only possible suspects in this crime, and I, of course, am the victim of this tragedy. This was a brand new bag of cookies that I had never touched before this moment. Whoever ate these cookies ate them in one sitting and left a couple skin cells behind. Luckily, I will use these to my advantage. To carry out this forensic DNA analysis, I'm going to use the skin cells that I was able to find in the empty bag at the crime scene. I've also collected DNA samples from each of the suspects as well as myself. I'll compare the data from each of us to determine who performed the crime. First, I'm going to isolate the DNA from the skin cells, use PCR to amplify the DNA segments of interest, followed by electrophoresis, and then I'm going to analyze the data. For the PCR portion of the experiment, I'm going to use primers that are specific for a particular gene of interest. The locus of this gene must be highly polymorphic so that the DNA segment links for different people will have variable links due to short tandem repeats or STRs. I will test two different STR regions so that I can identify the perpetrator using both loci for a particular gene. Using PCR, we can amplify these DNA segments, separate them based on size using electrophoresis, and then compare the sizes of the DNA segments for each suspect. The individual who has the same DNA fragment sizes as those observed from the evidence will be our perpetrator. So here are the electrophoresis results where the alleles at two loci were amplified using PCR and then they were separated via electrophoresis. Let's go to locus one. So on the left here, you can see the DNA fragment sizes for the evidence sample and bands that are closer to the top are larger in size than bands that are closer to the bottom, which are smaller in size. So if we compare the suspect's DNA fragment sizes to the evidence, um, we can see that Devin can be ruled out, the mom can be ruled out, and my sister can be ruled out because their bands don't match um, the fragment sizes for the evidence. So it's me, Spencer, my dad, and Cameron are the primary suspects at this point. So if we go to Locus 2 and we compare um, the suspects uh, DNA fragment sizes to the evidence, we can see that my bands, they don't really match the evidence and Cameron's bands, his don't match either. So that would lead us to conclude that dad is the perpetrator and the one who ate the cookies. And we know this because his DNA fragment sizes match the evidence's sample at both loci, at locus 2 and locus 1.